We are assuming you've seen Marvel's Endgame, and if you haven't, there will be a small spoiler alert, so don't blame us. In the movie Endgame, Thanos' main motive is to find all the stones for the Infinity Gauntlet, and then he wants to be able to snap and wipe away half of the population from the world. His vision is that with a lower population, there would be less competition, and thus, people would be happier with the same amount of resources. He believed there was overpopulation and that it was a big problem. Similarly, around every four years, a certain metric in Bitcoin is cut in half. Now you don't have to be a genius to know that if we look forward in the future, there will eventually be a time where that metric is close to zero. Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, our YouTube channel where we explain the topics of cryptocurrency using analogies, stories, and examples so that way you can easily understand them. Today we want to explain what the Bitcoin halving event is and what you should expect to see roughly in 2024 and the many years after. So what is Bitcoin halving? Well, before we get too deep into this video, you need to know basics of how Bitcoin works. First, let's assume that you know Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. Second, let's assume that you know that Bitcoin uses a proof-of-work mechanism, which simply means a bunch of people are competing to solve a problem. And when they win that problem, they get the reward of some Bitcoin. But they also get the reward of getting to add the next block to the blockchain. If you don't know what this means and if you want to learn more, we actually have a specific video about proof-of-work, including what this specific problem that they're solving is. And third, let's assume that you know Bitcoin was launched in 2009. So now that you know what these three things are, let's teach you about the halving event. Every four years, the amount of Bitcoins that are given out as a reward is cut in half. So in 2009, the rewards of solving a Bitcoin block was 50 Bitcoins. Actually, all the way from 2009 to 2012, the block reward was 50. Then from 2012 to 2016, the reward for solving the problem was 25 Bitcoins. And then from 2016 to 2020, the reward for solving the Bitcoin problem was 12 and a half. And now, since 2020 all the way to 2024, the reward will be 6.25 Bitcoins per block. After 2024, you guessed it, the reward will be half of 6.25, which is 3.125. So moving on, what's the reason for this? Well, if you think about any fiat currency that you currently carry, you can better understand what is happening. Let's take the US dollar for example. Whenever the United States of America needs more cash, or when it wants to reach certain economic goals, it can print it. Literally, it can print more money. And if the US starts to see that there's too much in circulation, they will print less and less next year, and vice versa if they think there needs to be more. Being humans, you can probably guess that we usually print more than we need. Anyways, this ever-increasing rate of money printing causes something called inflation. Now, the topic of inflation is a bit out of the scope for this video, but you need to know that it makes the value of your dollar less over time. If you want to support inflation here on this channel, consider clicking the like button, because as there's more and more likes on this video, we will require more and more likes to to have the same motivation to create another video. Moving on, Bitcoin is different than US cash though because it does have a hard limit. More and more Bitcoins get added each day. However, each day the clock is ticking down to there being less and less Bitcoins created. If the price stays the same, inflation will happen, but it doesn't happen at an exponential rate like the US dollar does. In fact, inflation of Bitcoin happens less and less as time goes on. Actually, eventually Bitcoin theoretically will become deflation meaning as time goes on, there will be less and less of it. Why? Because people will probably accidentally send Bitcoin to wallets that they do not have access to, meaning that the total circulating supply of Bitcoin will drop. And due to this, and due to the law of supply and demand, if demand stays the same, but more Bitcoin is lost each year than the amount that is mined, the price should increase. That's getting a little technical, so let's move on to how does the Bitcoin halving actually happen? Well, it's important to note that Bitcoin doesn't use real world time to determine when to cut miners' rewards in half. Instead, it uses its own block numbers. But more about that later. Bitcoin actually has an internal clock that is just a little off. It aims so that every 10 minutes, a new block is created or mined by the miners. But you might be asking, what if a ton of new miners join, and then because of that, the block is solved every five minutes? Because there's more people attempting to solve it, and by the law of probability, the rate at which the math problem is guessed is quicker. What happens then? Well, Bitcoin has something called a difficult and this is how it makes sure that on average, it takes 10 minutes to solve a block. It goes, oh, you have that much mining power? Well, statistically, with that much mining power, I'm going to make the problem harder so that it takes exactly 10 minutes to solve the problem each time. In other words, Bitcoin makes the problem to solve the block harder or easier depending on how many miners there were in the last two weeks. Basically, every two weeks, it adjusts itself. 
That's right, every two weeks, or actually 2016 blocks, Bitcoin will change its difficulty so that the average block, or the problem that is solved, is solved in 10 minutes. So that was a little confusing, but you just need to know that Bitcoin has an internal clock. And due to that, we just need one more piece of information. And that is that Bitcoin halves its block rewards every 210,000 blocks. And if we use our average block time of each block taking around 10 minutes to solve, what we get is the average halvening event happens every four years. So what should you do if you own, or maybe you're a miner of Bitcoin? Let's go over that. As an owner, you don't need to do anything. Some investors use the halving event as an event to speculate price, as the last few halvings have caused the price to increase. But this could also be simply due to the fact that Bitcoin is in the news more often and not because the supply is restricted a little bit. On the other hand, if you're a miner, you might need to look and see if your operation is still profitable. As a smaller reward is given out to the same amount of equipment, the large players who have what is called economies of scale, which are things like large cooling warehouses or solar panel power, those miners might have an edge. And on the other hand, if a bunch of people stop mining, then the difficulty will drop, which may increase your own profitability. Either way, we highly recommend you to do your own research and err on the side of caution whenever investing. This brings us to one last problem. What happens when it keeps halving and it halves to zero? Because one day the miner rewards will be so low that the price of mining may not be worth the rewards that you get from mining it. What happens then? Well, we don't really know, but maybe we can save that question for another video. So now it's your turn. What do you think of this halving idea? Is it good for inflation? Is it good for the miners? Do you think it should be increased or decreased? Was Thanos right snapping half the population away? We'd love to know your opinions below. But before fully signing off, I want to take a moment to really thank you guys for watching our videos and supporting us from the comments section. As the channel has been growing, you all have been our main motivators, and it makes creating this type of content much easier knowing that you guys are there with us along for the journey. As always, we hope that you enjoyed today's video. We really hoped you learned something. And most importantly, we hope to see you in the next video.